hey, hey, how you doing, man? I'm good, man. I'm doing this on my, oh, here we go. Great, 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 great. I'm doing this on my phone because I just tried it out on my computer and I was like, doesn't look as good. <laughs> let, me get this, let me get this set right, though. You got All right, it. man. Good to see you. I got to get this switch, though, because right now I'm looking at myself than at you. There we go. All right. I don't know how I do that. Have you ever done this on your phone? Uh, usually not on. It's usually on my laptop. I've tried yeah, it on yeah. the I mean, it's just then you got to get it situated. Yeah, yeah. All I got to do is figure out. Um, okay. All I got to do is try to figure out really quick. There we go. I did it. Cool. Now you are the main view of mine. I, oh. It just feels weird. It feels weird when you're staring so much at myself. <laughs> All right. Awesome, awesome. So happy to have you back, Caleb. How you been? Oh, man. I have been good since I saw you last. I mean, everyone's life has changed dramatically because pandemic, but mine has changed, I want to say, even more dramatically because I have, um, I, I'm a dad of, of two kids now. So oh, wow. it's like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, my wife and I adopted um, our daughter, like, well, she's a year and a half year she's a year and a half old um so we adopted her then and then we ended up with another one just like four months ago so yeah life since i saw you man life has uh gotten sort of different <laughs> a little different now well congratulations yeah. big papa <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> yeah i did thank see you. an instagram post it's, it's really cool um you post a couple pictures with you and your kids and uh, yeah it's awesome. Man. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really cool. You know, I you know, I was always you know knew it was something I always wanted to do, but um, yeah, I always was a little nervous because you know it's like obviously artists. Tend, I feel like we tend to be a little selfish with our time, and I mean that's how we get good at our craft. And so, you know, I was a little bit like, man, where's all my time going to go? And uh, yeah, we, we I had it. We had. I had it figured out where I had some time to keep on making music and stuff. And then the second one came and now it's like, I have zero time. So that's, that's the, the only, the only issue is that, uh, damn, it's, it's hard, it's hard to find time to make, to make music. <laughs> now you got to squeeze it in. I know, I know. Yeah. But you yeah. seem to be very productive just as much before, man. I caught up on the music since. And I mean, to me, it looks like you've been, Heck of productive and some great music, man. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I I, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I put out an album in September or October. I can't remember. Um, and yeah, wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, live videos to go with it. Yeah, I did. I I kept very busy. I tried to keep myself busy during the whole pandemic and everything. And and uh, yeah. You know, thank you for listening to it. Hey, it's listen. I, it's good music finds its way to me. So I appreciate you sharing your art with me and the rest of the world. I mean, it's uh, when it's good, it's good. And yeah, I listened to your latest album and man, it's like every song is just well thought out, well played, well written, well performed. So man, my hat goes off to you, Kayla. Thanks, man. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm not really, I am definitely proud of it. Um, it's just, in, it's, it's weird. It, this was the first time, obviously, as so many artists that uh, you're not able, you, I wasn't able to go play the album out live, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, so it was just, it, most albums I feel, you know, like it's like I do the album and then I, you know, then I have, then I get to go play the, play it to live people and live audience. And, and so I feel like I live with it longer in that way. And this one, it's almost like in my mind, you know, I wonder, it might be the album that for me is like, oh yeah, that happened. Because it's like, <laughs> I made the album and I released it, but then like the best part of releasing an album, I mean, I, as much as I love recording and all that stuff, the best part is play, going and playing the si songs live. But, um, you know, by the time I get back to live shows, 
I, I mean, I, I might have a new album by then. <laughs> you probably have to have, you'll, you'll have like a double, uh, two album status to, to go promote all at one time. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. So that's a trip. So let's, let's talk about that a little bit. Cause I mean, it's you, you're a live player. That's one of the things I like about you is that. You're a studio guy, but you do play as well. Like you're a live guy just as much as you are studio. And how did um uh, how did COVID affect you? I mean, was it was it hard? Was it uh, life changing? I mean, how did you handle it in the beginning when it first broke yeah. out? That, like life was just different. When it first happened, I mean, I was totally in denial. I was like trying to keep my shows in April. I was like, no, we're gonna be fine. You know, obviously. And then, and then pretty soon I was like, I mean, it was, I would say by the fall or maybe even summer, I was like, it may seem like a cynical look, but I was like, I don't think I'm going to be playing any shows till 2022. And um, it's going to end up being close to that. I mean, I, I uh, you know, so it was, it was, yeah. I mean, for the first, I would say like, at first, I went heavy into the live stream. I was like, I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to do live stream. And just like everyone was doing, you know. And I just, I was doing like a weekly thing. And it just, it's, it, it, honestly, honestly, if that's where the music business is headed, like if that's where performance is headed, like honestly, I'm, I'm probably going to choose a different profession. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just, uh, live streams don't do it <clears throat> for me. Um, yeah, you know, so I want so so first I did that. I kind of learned like live streams are just you know not my cup of tea, you know. And so, um, and then at that point, I just but I kept on hanging on, you know, like trying to hang it on to uh to my career and like me as an artist and trying to stay connected, you know. But I would say now that it's been a year or a little year and change, um. Yeah, in the last four or five months, it's it's been pretty tough just to like be like, what the hell, like my identity is like feels a little crushed, you know? It's like because not only is there no shows or no anything, it's like then I'll now I'm like also besides just pandemic, it's also like the dad thing, and I'm, you know, so it's like it feels yeah, it's, it's, it feels interesting for sure, like trying to figure out how this is, what this is going to be moving forward and, and feeling like a little disconnected to, to it. And that's been, that's been tough because this has been, you know, a huge part of my identity since I was 15, you know? So. Yeah. yeah. No, I can imagine. I mean, like I said, you, you, you play live, like that's what you do. So that I could see that having an impact. I mean, is it, does, does it affect the music at all, the way you write or making songs these days? Um, I mean, no, like not the, not the absence of, of live shows. Like, <clears throat> I feel like if anything, it actually, you know, frees me up in a way of, of schedule. That all being said, you know, with my life, with what's going on in my life, like I, I don't have much don't have much time but i mean it it um but yeah i mean it's it's uh so it doesn't necessarily like change the writing but um but yeah i mean writing is something i still you know i always i mean i i always go back and forth like i'll go a couple months without doing it and then i'm like then i'll get back into it where i'll do you know i'll block out you know a couple hours a day just to make sure i'm like staying staying with it you know like i'll say like i was pretty you know my thought about this year 2021 i was like set i was like feeling very motivated and i was like i'm i felt confident i was going to release a song like every other week like and um but that was i feel like i keep on talking about it that was before i before i knew about the second child right and so and so at that so then you know that sort of like changed the plans a little bit because it was um 
just just because of not having the the time to to write so you know but um i'm always trying to i'm always trying to stay productive because it makes me feel good i guess that I, that's like part of the american in me <laughs> yeah well i mean you know you 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 do well and like I said, I was just going through a lot of the songs since I last talked to you. Man, like it's you're in tune with the music. I mean, it really, you know, a lot of the tracks hit me. One of them, which I know is is after the album, but um, "Call on Me" is, is a great track. I really enjoy it. And um, for some reason, it's not that you sound like these artists, but it was like I was like, I wonder if he likes Otis Redding and Sam Cooke because it just I could see him liking them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean, I love, you know, soul music, early soul music. Um, you know, I mean, I never dove into their catalog like huge. Those in specific, those artists in specific. But, um, you know, I did grow up listening to a lot of Ray Charles, thanks to my granddad giving give, giving me his uh stuff. You know, so yeah. I mean, I've always, I, I love soul music for as long as I can remember. Um, but, uh, yeah, th I mean, thank you. Call on me is, is, um, um, is, is actually a bit older. I just decided to release it because it, it ended up getting a play, it ended up getting a placement on the show that was on Netflix. And so it was getting all this attention and I wasn't sure how I felt about it because I thought it was done quick. You know, I was like, well, I mean, I, I I wasn't sure if it like necessarily fit with what I else what I was doing, and so, you know, at first I didn't release it. I just had it up on like YouTube, and then, but people kept on asking for me to put it out on Spotify. So then I, then I did. But I actually, I wrote that song a while ago. I wrote that one five years ago wow. on a bus. Yeah, on a bus going through Mexico. I had just uh, had it. I, that was I had a big like transformation at that point and I was just listening to a lyric go by and it was a, just a very like you know self-destructive lyric um and I just I wrote that song with like a a friend of mine that's like going through something you know and um I mean it came from a really pure and positive place which to be totally honest, I mean, in the, you know, like circular graph of my life, like that's just been a very small portion, but uh, <laughs> that, that was definitely one of the portions. <laughs> as far as like being a cynic versus whatever. You know? Right. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. I remember you telling me about your trips to Mexico and how, <laughs> you know, when you travel, you kind of, I don't know, maybe since you're outside of your normal element that that kind of inspired you a lot, what you're saying. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, that was, um, I mean, yeah, that's all, I mean, traveling, you know, uh, it, it's always, it's always been inspiring to me. Um, yeah, I, you know, definitely look forward to when I can do it, when I can do it again. You know, it's another thing that feels like distant, you know, like, yeah, that's, Kind of to go back, and um, I am rambling a bit, but to go back to, you know, like, um, yeah, the whole like identity thing. Like, it just it, it feels like it's been so long since shows and everything. It, it almost just it feels like strangely, it feels like a past life. Like, I know that it's going to exist again, right? But like, it's just weird like that, you know. No, I know what you mean. I mean, it, it, yeah. it's no, I, I know exactly what you mean. I mean, it, it's <laughs> even talking about like vacations and traveling and you're talking about something that was what, you know, a year and a half, two years ago. And you think back on it, you're like, yeah, man, it was kind of cool to go <laughs> to that place, you know? And that was like, wow, that was like a, and then it almost feels like a different life. Like what? Like yeah. after a year of being secluded and, can't go anywhere you know it does feel somewhat like an alternate reality like man you know 
we we were traveling freely. We could go, you know, and, and now and I, I could I could see where you could say that because it yeah. this past year has been a different universe altogether. It's been something different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but um, but, yeah. But thanks for checking out all the all the stuff. I mean, yeah, calling me was you know even though it was old and it was recently released, and, and uh, you know. I partly released it when I was still in the in the zone because I was like, I was like, okay, I know I can't do one a, one a week or one every other week, but I'm gonna do one a month, and so that was my February one, and then I've been done. <laughs> but I've been, <laughs> but you know, I've got I've got a little like, I'm really you know scheduling a couple hours a day. I mean, the thing is, is like, I've just seen some people on some productivity levels that have just like been mind boggling to me. And I'm just like, man, I like, I mean, two people that I've, that I've, that I can come to mind is one is this one is Corey Wong. He put out like four albums last year. And I know it's like, you know, instrumental, which I'm obviously, I, which can sometimes come a little faster, you know, yeah. Yeah. but I'm still like, damn. And then I look at, uh, this guy like this like hip hop guy Russ and like he put out he would put out a song a week and I was just thinking like you know if I can kill my perfectionism and just like just not not make things too precious and I can do that you know but actually and you and you can you can but like it's I mean you can do that but it's also tough because I mean you have I mean to me to write a genuine song that I'm going to be like proud of and want to release, it's probably going to have to have an actual emotion attached to it, you know? And, mm -hmm. and, and so that's why, you know, it, I mean, it's like a weird thing. Cause it's like, you don't want your life to be a total roller coaster because it's just uncomfortable yet. The roller coaster is good because it, it it produces songs, you know. <laughs> so so it's like, uh, but but that's why I find it. So if, if if I'm not on that roller coaster, if I'm not in a, in a big high or big low, like it can be actually hard to produce a song, at least lyrically, you know. Absolutely, because you need something to kind of grab onto. It's it's like, um, you know, and I totally know what you mean. It's like you want to be in a certain emotional state that's congruent with the song. And if, if you don't have those two things happening, it, you know, it's, it's not like you could force it, right? It's like, it's either there or not there. It's, it's, it seems like from what you're saying is that you tend to, maybe when you write or you put together songs, you you are playing what you feel in that moment. And that's, that what, that's kind of what makes it authentic. Yeah, I mean, there, yeah, I mean, or it really helps. I would just say it really helps. Because, I mean, I have at times when I'm like, I'm going to go away and I'm going to write, you know. And, and and I will come up with something then as well. But, like, if I'm just at home, you know, if I'm not, like, on a writing retreat, if I'm just at home and just, like, live in life or whatever, it's, it's hard to be, to get a, to get motivated to have, like, a song unless it's, like, I need to write this song. Like, this is an emotion I'm feeling. And, you know, rather than shoving it down, I, I'm going to write it, you know? Right. And so, and so, you know, ha having that helps, you know, it's, it's like a double-edged story, I guess. Well, I think it's just, you know, there's, there's ebbs and flows. And I think um, from what you're telling me, I mean, Corey Wong putting out four albums in one year is pretty insane. But uh, <laughs> it is. You know, but who knows, man? Maybe he had a bunch of songs that were just stacked up and ready to go, and that was finally True. his moment to put it out there. Because maybe you know, and maybe for that, you, it's like you're used to being on the road, and you needed that that break. But but then you'll come, you know, you you bring it back again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's just. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, I just. I, I, I would honestly, I really do wish I wish I could do that. I just, I feel like it's possible, but also I'm like, maybe it's not possible for me. Anyways, you know, yeah. like, yeah, 
Um, but you, you've been hella productive, though. I mean, and this album is just like solid. Like every single song is well thought, well played. Even uh, it's so mysterious, man. I I keep listening to it. It's so fun. Tell me about that song, man, because it's like I kind of feel like I've had moments like that where it's like I'm an idiot, you're an idiot. Why can't we get along? like what's behind that? Yeah. Um, well, actually, it's it's a I don't even know what the book is, but my I was having a conversation with my uncle, and he um, he was telling me about a book that he was reading. And it kind of had that concept in it, you know, and it was just about finding compassion for uh, other people, people that aren't like you. And I mean, honestly, like, <clears throat> I mean, for some reason, it feels a little less divided right now. But like when I wrote that song, maybe a year and a half, two years ago, um, everything just felt so tense. And the truth is, is that, it might still be really tense. I just haven't paid attention to the news for like a month. So I'm a little, I don't know. So I don't, I feel like, you know, but I, I everything just felt, you know, very tense. And I felt like there was so much judgment out there like from each side. And like, yeah, I guess I've always been a bit more of a, like a moderate in that way because it's just like, you know, I grew up, I had like these two, two kind of um, like views, you know. Like I grew up in a, like very like in a Christian faith, but like there was my fam, my family was like whatever, like different teachers and stuff. Some, I guess, more liberal, but like they, but like you know, I'd be at church with like this conservative conservative side, and then my family would go to music folk festivals in the summer, which was totally like liberal, but they were both like preaching. And I always like, and so like, I feel like I would always be watching like both sides kind of like jab at the other side. And it, it just was always bothersome to me because it always just like seemed, um, I don't know, I just, I just like, because I knew people on, <laughs> I know people on both sides or, in the middle of whatever, and and uh, I just think it's important for us to realize that, like, we don't have no one has all the answers. I mean, even with everything, with like, like COVID has been hilarious because it's like people are like the amount of times things have changed and the amount of information that is just like so confusing. It's just like, yeah. I mean, it part of me just wants to say like, no one fucking knows anything, you know, like, <laughs> and and I, I mean, I. Like, yeah, and, and, uh, and I mean, yeah, and I don't know. No, I know uh, what you mean. I know yeah. what you mean. I mean, it, there was a lot of, like, push and pull with COVID and pre-COVID. I mean, there, there was a lot yeah. of, like, just, like, this is my side, that's your side. There was, it, was, it was getting kind of ugly. It, it really was. And it, like you said, it may still be out there, but, um, yeah. I mean, it was, it was, it was getting kind of dark. And so that's the song. It's just like, you're saying, it's just, Hey, let's just oh, all yeah. get along. I mean, we don't have to be well, exactly yeah. the same. Right. Yeah. I mean, exactly. And that's like the, you know, and I tried to make it as hooky as I could. And also like, uh, you know, just lots of F, lots of F bombs just to make people, um, you know, try to grab attention. <laughs> You did it well. You did it well. You, I like how you start off low and then you get real high with it. I'm like, man, this yeah. is awesome. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, like that, that is like, I'm bummed I've never really gotten to play that song live, but that's been, that's probably my favorite song on the album. I just like, I, um, I don't know. I just, uh, I, I, I just really, you know, those lyrics come from the heart, really. Like, I really, I feel like, you know, and part of it is, like, I feel personally like I don't know shit. And so I get a little, I get bothered by people that, like, are so concrete in their in their views. And I'm kind of, I mean, I'm also amazed and impressed because I don't have that. Like, I'm like, what? Oh, I'm all, like, you know, I don't have, like, stern things like that so 
Um, I guess maybe that's that's also a little bit of response to to that, you know, people that think they know everything. You know? Oh yeah, and we've all known people like that. You know, it's like <laughs> they got an answer for everything, and you yeah. know, some of it might be pretty good. Some of it's like, yeah, like this is all like. Sometimes it comes off as if it's all remembered and rehearsed and you know, yeah. talking to themselves too long. And now they have you as your as the captive audience. They get the riff for a couple hours, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know how that goes. But yeah, you, you, your songs come off very genuine and, and very, um, like you said, from the heart. And, uh, and maybe that's what's great about you. You know, you're saying that, you know, you're not like this stern know-it-all but you know maybe you're you're more of a like a sponge and i think that you're able to absorb a lot of these these elements out there and, and make them into great songs another one for me that's um that actually i have been listening to for a while um and i don't know if it was released before the album mm -hmm. but um high on a heartbreak cool. man man yeah. dude it's, yeah. it's so like again Genuine and uh, it's just got this production vibe. This is chill, but your 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 voice and the lyrics. Are, tell me, what's that song about? Break that down for me. Yeah, so I had just that title. I mean, I'm always glad when I can come up with the title because then it's like you have the endpoint to write towards. You know, rather than if you have some lyrics, sometimes it can be hard. But I was, I just liked that concept because. Um, you know, it's, I mean, I just think sometimes we like get addicted to the, almost like the pain of like living, like being in a heartbreak. So we like stay in it, you know, it's like when you, you when we should be, <laughs> we should, it'd be best for us just to move on, but it's almost like you're getting something out of it. Kind of like, a, you know, it's, it's a self, maybe a self-destructive, um, drug sort of thing but um but yeah i uh i mean last time we spoke i um when i was in la i that's what I, that, that was when i was writing that song at least the verses um because yeah i mean i i, I that was just like it wasn't it was one of the, those songs actually that wasn't um it wasn't necessarily like a produced from a strong emotion I was feeling. Mm -hmm. It was more, it was more like I have this title and I'm going to write toward that and I'm going to use the past experience and the way these things feel. And, and just, uh, yeah, write toward that, toward that idea. And yeah, it was, it, it's, I'm proud of that song because it's, it's a different form than I usually it's kind of got like four sections and they're all, it's like the same, it's a four chord loop, just keeps on going, but it doesn't, I don't feel that it seems like monotonous or anything. And, and um, yeah, so I, I, it's just, it's unique to me in that way. And yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad you dig it. I mean, that, um, I kind of went with the whole vocal thing. I wasn't sure I was big. I was going to go into production. That was kind of like a last minute decision because after listening to some um, Crosby, Stills, and Nash, I was like, maybe I, I kind of want to have like the heavy harmony thing, you know? And so mm -hmm. that was I sort of peeled back a lot of what I had originally in the production. And so I'm glad you, I'm glad you say that about the vocals and stuff because that was definitely intended. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's just, it's very natural sounding. And uh, a lot of your songs, it's just, you know, um, I'm always gravitated towards guitar. You always have great guitar parts, but your vocal too is what solidifies everything in, in the writing. But um, yeah, man, that's every time I hear that song, it's just like, wow, that's like a great natural song and a great performance. And um, yeah, that, that, that's cool. And yeah, it's interesting you talk about the, the album's kind of a concept because, yeah, I, I checked out the um, intro and it was cool because you're talking about, you know, as a kid, I, I dreamed of growing up and being like, 
Kirby Puckett. And I remember yeah. the last time we talked, like you were you were seriously in the baseball. So I, that was that was neat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's funny. I don't. I, the thing is, is like the reason why I, I probably well, it. I mean, it fits because I'm talking about being a kid and what I want to be. So I would be looking at take every bucket, but that's like that's sort of when it when it stopped. Like I don't go to like I don't know Jack about like uh, base like what's going on in baseball now. But I love baseball as a kid up until like high school, and then I got. Like then music took over, but but um yeah, I mean, you know, Curry Bucket, he was my hero, you know. It's he then he had a really sad end to his career because he got I think he got like beamed in the like by a pitch like in the head. Oh man. And it caused it caused like some I mean I'm you know, and I'm seventy percent sure that's true. It might have just been that he had glaucoma. But I thought that that's what caused it. But he had, he basically like he wasn't blind, but he couldn't. He just couldn't, uh, you know, didn't have the same sight. And obviously, that matters so much in baseball. But yeah, you know. But yeah, you're right. It is. It is sort of a concept because um, uh, just at least when in the in the first little bit of the of the songs, and I mean, I would say the concept of it. I mean, it's in the title, a circular thing. There's just a lot of. Uh, a lot of things around like going and you know, coming back around or stuff, you know. Yeah, it was really cool. And I also like I know the album is called Circular Thing, but I like the, the track as well, Circular Thing. Tell me about that. Um yeah. Um that's just I wrote that one I think as well, like a few probably like actually more like three years ago. And I just was waiting until like actually produce it and um yeah you know what that song i really i feel like i kind of figured some stuff out with from my for myself it might seem simple but it was helpful to me and um you know it, in the last in the last verse slash chorus it's like well basically like the first verse it's like you know, things go around and around, so it's so extreme that we're killing each other the next time. Um, and that's just about, you know, whatever, wars or whatever, like, and it builds up. And then the next, the next time it's kind of my story in high school, and it's, and it's uh, we're kissing each other. And then and the last time is, it goes round and round to a so extreme that we're changing each other. And <laughs> that helped me because I, you know, sometimes feel very, I sometimes feel very small, you know, and, and that can be, that can be tough for me. It's like, I'm just like, man, I want to do something big, you know? And, but um, realizing that all the little things, all of us, you know, we, all the little things we do where, where it changes, you know, change the world. You don't have to do a massive thing or whatever. You can, any little action. You know, and so, uh, yeah, it, it was kind of a, a therapeutic song for me. That's great. That's yeah. great. And I agree. You know, it's like um, we always want to do that big thing, but, you know, it's it's every little thing. Mm. Out. So, I mean, it's, you know, you look at the classics like Back to the Future. I mean, just one small thing, you know, that can change the course of history, you know. And you may not think it's that significant. <laughs> But but it really is every little thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I mean, I was glad to finally put that out. You know, Jeff. One thing is, I will say, in a certain way, I feel like, although it all seemed productive, you know, it felt like a like I was cheating a little bit because I was I was digging back just songs I hadn't. I hadn't produced, you know, like I had, you know, when I think about the album, I bet, I bet like out of the nine songs, I'm, I'm probably only half of them were like were pretty new, you mm -hmm. know? So, I mean, the other half were probably anywhere to like, like four to five years old. Man. 
That's yeah. impressive. But it all flows like it was at one time. I mean, nobody would really. Well, know, I will say, you know? I will say, production wise, yeah, production wise, it was actually the quickest album I've done, and I tried to do that on purpose because I was like, I want to be in this headspace. Like, I want to produce all these things. Like, and so I did that almost all in. Jan, like I started it in the beginning of 2020 and was basically done with the album in March. And, and then we were like kind of sitting on it for a little bit, just trying to figure out some things. And, you know, I just, the only reason why it was released in October is because we tend to do that as artists, like try to, or managers, like try to make a plan, you know, like, Oh, how am I going to release this? You know, like, <laughs> You know, like, shit, I should have just released that. Like, yeah. oftentimes we sit there thinking about the plan and then, um, then you kind of lose, you, like, as an artist, at least I kind of lose the, some of the initial interest and the excitement about it, you know? Because, mm-hmm. like, I, I mean, I, I loved the, I loved all the songs and the productions when I was, you know, up until about, like, May. By then, you know, because you always, you know, I'm listening to him so much, and then, I'm, and then, uh, so then to like wait another four months to release. You know, it's. I mean, I've always done it that way, and I think most artists do. But it, I wonder if it'd be, it, it'd be cool sometimes just to actually release it like right when it's done, because yeah. that's when you're most excited about it. That's when you're most hyped about it. You're most like you, you just. You're still on that high of the songs, you know, right? Yeah, and, you know, yeah, and you can, and you can, in that way, you can like. I feel like as far as like talking about the album, like putting it out there on social media or whatever, putting it out so people can see it and promote it, like you can genuinely feel good about that and better about it because you're genuinely excited about it, you know. Whereas, whereas if I'm trying to like promote an album five months later, like for me anyways, like I'm kind of like, where was that? A little, yeah, I mean, a a little, a little over it because, you know, when you record the songs and you just listen to them so many times, even though you love them in the beginning, you can't get, can't get enough. It's like, by the end, you know, it's like, gets kind of worn out. Yeah, you've heard heard them many times. So, I mean, what what was the, production you know or, or your you know you, we've talked about the writing but uh you know i remember last time we talked i mean it seemed like you were very much um you know self-contained you know you, you, you do most of the parts you put them together and then you have them mixed i mean was it the same way with these songs you know this one i i play i had i had a drum i had someone play drums and then I kind of like just mapped out like little demos and then I had to put down the drums. And then I played everything else except for organ because I have this guy, David Farrell Melton, and he's just, he's just a mind boggling player. And for some reason, I don't know why, I just was like, I want B3 on this. Like, and I want it to be a kind of a, a thing of, of the whole album, like something that's sort of, and so it's on every, it's on like, I don't know, at least two thirds of the, of the, uh, songs. And, and, um, and so, yeah. And then I, and then I played everything else. Um, but I didn't, uh, but like usually in the past I've, I've had most of it mixed by someone else. And then this time I, I mixed it, I mixed most of it myself except for a high on heartbreak. What? And I will, yeah. And I will say that. Yeah. I mean, um, the only, my only regret with that is personal. Like I feel good about how it sounds and I feel like people have told me I've gotten good enough feedback where I feel confident in that. Um, but uh, I do think it's best to have at least one person on one other person, you know, other than myself, like on it at some point, you know, like right. just because you know, I've started. I've started to feel more confident in mixing and everything, but like, it's totally like I'm no expert. You know, like, 
I mean, mixing can be really, really detailed and intense. And I just, I don't even have that knowledge, you know, of, of like that a real like mixing engineer does. But I was feeling confident because in the past, I'd gone, I'd gone back to some of my old mix, old mixes and been like happy, sometimes been happier with what I had before, before I sent it off. Right. And so I was like, I'll try, I'll try mixing most of it. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I think now I'll probably, if I can, I, I'll get a mix by someone else, but um, it just depends. You know, it's like, if it's like 99% there and if it's like, this is basically what I want, I need like, then, I mean, it doesn't necessarily make sense, you know? Well, that's, I'm impressed, man. I mean, if you mixed it as well. <clears throat> that's really saying a lot. I mean, that's, you, you've, you were already good, but you've grown even further because that yeah. thinking is an art unto itself. And uh, it is. But I imagine, you know what, you're pretty, you're pretty intense with what you're doing. And I could kind of see, I mean, I don't know if it's actually happened to you, but I could see you having a song done, sending it off to mix, and what you get back is pretty much what you had. So it's just like, sure. you know, I may as well just mix the thing. I mean, it's not putting down the mixer, but you probably are, you're getting to the point where you're pretty close to where you want it to sound anyway. So. Yeah, you know, that's what it is, you know? That's what, I think it's like a lot of people, you know, don't have, you know, they'll hire people because they just aren't, they don't trust themselves, you know? Like, it's not like they don't, and I totally understand, like, because for a long time I did, and, but I think what made me finally build trust in myself is like, well, two things is one is when I would get a mix and I would be like, and I would A, B the mixes and I'd be like, yeah, mine is like, you know, to my ear, they, they're either close enough or whatever, you know, but then the other that I don't, it's, I guess I'm doing that. I guess I'm doing pretty good mixes, you know? What? But then the second thing is like, I had a, I have a friend who was like doing great, really very well on Spotify and like he was doing, he was producing and mixing it all. And he was also like in my boat when it comes to mixing, like, you know, we were not like experts, like we didn't go to, school or something or learn all about the all, all the hurts and stuff and but i was like well he's doing it so i mean i guess i can you know that helped too yeah no i mean if it sounds good it sounds good and um you know i've seen artists do that where they happen to to have the mix to where they wanted it and i think for you just being a self-contained artist that you are even though you do, you know, you, you play with other musicians, but you also do quite a bit on your own. I mean, if, if what you're hearing, if you're A, B and the mixes and yours is, you know, pretty close or you might even prefer yours, I think that you've, you've reached that level. So that's, that's yeah. perfect, man, because that, the whole album is mixed very well. And uh, Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. I, I mean, man, I, part of it is, it's one more step though, to be like, when I listen back to be paranoid about, to be like, or, or even kind of be a, like doubter sometimes, like be like, like the other day I listened to the album and I think maybe I was in a different vehicle or something than I was used to. And it felt like the bass was just cranked. And I was like, it's like I totally fucked up the album. You know, this is this <laughs> this is you know, and so like I was like, well, too late, you know, whatever, you know. And whereas like I wouldn't have that, I wouldn't ever have that feeling, probably if I gave it to well, this one guy in particular, because yeah, I just I fully I have more I trust him more than I trust myself, but I'm trying to like trying to get to full trust in myself with it. But I mean, clearly I'm not totally there because, you know, 
if I have a thought like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's probably a part of yourself that's just like, probably sounds pretty darn good. And you're just like, well, it can't be that it did it all. Like it needs to go, it needs to be processed. You know, it needs to, someone needs to, you know, tweak the knobs and, and, you know, pan this left and right. But yeah, I mean, if it sounds right, it sounds right. That's yeah. That's really yeah, yeah. Yeah, totally. So, yeah. um, yeah, but also though, like one thing good about hiring a mixture, I'd also say is like, I feel like they, they take care of like, that's where perfectionism can get like kind of crazy. It's like the, the last piece and it, you know, even just the time that that, that, that can like going back and like doing those little, like it's almost worth hiring someone just to like not have to do that, you know? Cause it's, it's just like little small things that you just get like, you can drive so crazy. I, it, it, well, yeah, you drive yourself crazy, and also, like, I'd ra- it, for me, I would, I would rather be writing if, if I'm gonna spend like four hours, like, perf- like being like, oh, that's not quite right, but it's close. I could have written a new song in that time, you know, so or or at least started some stuff, you know. So it's like, you know, just figuring out how to prioritize it, you know. Yeah. No, I know what you mean. I mean, I think each artist kind of has their way of finalizing things. And, you know, I was um, listening to a podcast about Prince uh, a couple months ago, and um, it wasn't Susan Rogers, but there was another uh, female engineer. And what I found interesting about a lot of his recording was that um, – he kind of liked the first sound of everything he did and didn't like a lot of things tweaked. Yeah, he did not. You know what I mean? So, for example, <clears throat> I don't know, say like a guitar part or a keyboard part. He, he'd record it and, the, you know, whatever the sound that, you know, without them really doing much tweaking, he's hearing it back and he's like, okay, that's it. And then he'd go out, do something, come back in and they could you could tell that, you know, they'd fiddled the knobs and, and turned up the highs and the lows. And he's like, what did you do to my guitar? You know, whatever the part was. And they're like, well, it wasn't proper, Prince. This is not, you, you can't just, and he's like, listen, I like the sound that I heard, you know, while I was recording. So he really didn't, he didn't have much tweaked really. I mean, you know, it's. Um, Interesting. You know what? That sort of makes sense to me because that, <clears throat> what makes sense to me is the fact that the dude had like, by the time he, at what he died at like 55 or something he had 38 albums and like i mean like you know you cannot be a perfect like a crazy perfectionist and put out that much material i always think of this guy who i never met but i've just this is like this to me is is like exactly what not to do <laughs> but, but it's uh this guy who I made made an album, and um, it's kind of a weird thing because it was somebody telling me about this guy. And the guy was the guy was like, "Yeah, I mean, he made this album ten years ago, and he showed it to me then. And then now, ten years later, he has the same album, same songs, and it's gone through, you know, like twenty different, like it's gone on a massive journey. It's been like." like 20 different versions of each song, essentially. Right. And like, he still hasn't put it out. So, I mean, like, that is like the worst case of perfectionism, you know? Yeah. And the, the reason why I, under, I understand that is a little bit is because I, I used to do that with songs. Like, I would do like three versions and think like, oh, it's going to get better every time. But honestly, like, no, it doesn't mean that it's going to get better every time. It's going to get different. But it's it's really not necessarily going to get better, and like, and so now I'm more like go in and record something, and like I mean I'm aspiring to be more like I guess Prince in that way because just the first idea, first take, take that because I mean, it, 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 I mean obviously like I'm not, I don't mean like first take if there's like mistakes and stuff, take that. I mean like, but. But take that first idea instead of like, 
you know, trying out five different things because what's, <laughs> I don't know. You can get, because you, I, get, yeah. you know, you get totally lost in it. Yeah, you could put out, you could put out, you could put out, not even put out the same album for 10 years. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that is, that's, that's terrifying. Bad. That's, that's terrifying. Bad. That's like, I mean, it's like some, it's like some version of orders, you know, it's some version of like that show orders. But yeah, it's, I mean, but it's like the audio version. It's just like, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's, you know, I have the same album for 10 years. And he's still in there you know, mixing it around and stuff. I and mean, that's like, yeah, it's so torturous. It sounds like torture. It is. It is. It is. I know. It's like perfectionism, just like, yeah. it's just, you have, you know, we have to stamp that down. You know? But, you know, yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot we can learn from Prince for sure. I mean, you know, in all honesty, and, you know, and I know you're a fan too of, of, Prince, um, yeah. you go back and you listen to his stuff. And I, I know that it's even, you know, take like the 80s stuff. I mean, it's a pretty long time ago, but you compare it to some of the mixes of that time. Some of it's pretty raw. I mean, it's it sounds fantastic. And I think it, that's what gives it all its character and its originality. Yeah. But if I, you know, I listen to like, let's go crazy. Oh. Like, that's like, that's raw, man. Like, even for that yeah. time, 1983. To me, it sounds pretty. It sounds fantastic. I'm not knocking yeah. for it, not even a split second. For the genius, but it's pretty raw to me. Well, I mean, what do you no, think? Totally, totally. Sometimes, in my opinion, Prince's guitar tone is terrible. Like <laughs> DI, like, like I'm like, what? like just like nothing, you know. And I'm like, and I'm, in my mind, you know, I haven't like I haven't heard that story. That just said that I didn't know that he was like that. Like. <laughs> but it totally makes sense. And before you were about to say what you were just saying, I totally knew what you, where you were going because I absolutely feel that way. Like it, it feels like sounds have not been like really wor worked out. I mean, raw is, is a definitely a good word for it. Yeah, because I mean, there's some great sound and stuff in the eighties. You know, like really just like pristine sound. Is, and uh, Prince's mixes, like oftentimes, like. Yeah, I mean, I like them because I because I do like you know. But if I was actually t doing it from like an analytical standpoint on how I would, I'd be like, whoa, like and even yeah. not even not even just the earlier stuff, musicology. Like, I think that album is like two thousand four, and like that. I I listened to that before I was even a huge Prince fan, or before I even knew anything about mixing. And I remember thinking, like, man, this is kind of weird. Like, some weird decisions, you know? <laughs> it's like the bass, the bass is so loud. So, you know, it's like, so yeah, I mean, I, I totally, I totally feel you. Right. And, and yeah. also, like, everything was DI. You know, like, some people spend three hours getting a guitar tone, getting them right, getting the right amp, the right, the right guitar, getting the way it's mic. Like you go to a studio and they're like, listen, man, we're, we're going to do two songs in two days. We're going to spend the first whole day getting sounds like, or something. Like, I remember people, before I recorded a lot, like, that was so much of it was about like, getting sounds. And, um, and I, yeah, if you, if you, I mean, I, I feel like I used to care a little bit more about that. But, and I'm like, it all depends on how many songs you you want to make, you know, because that can take, you can spend your whole time in, in these sounds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Long time tweaking knobs and yeah. trying to get that sound, which, you know, there's no right or wrong, but uh, yeah, and it, it's just so weird. It took me a while to figure that out with Prince, but over probably the past few years, I was, you know, you know, you just get more, more familiar with sounds and, you know, I was, I was like, man, some of the stuff is it kind of sounds like well recorded demos that are that are polished, but they're they're not. He was not an overproduced guy. Not 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 for most of his work. Some of it was was a little more produced, but a lot of it was pretty raw. But I think that's yeah. also what captured people because it was just like, wow, man! It's like 
Yeah. It's nasty, it's funky, but it's beautiful all at the same yeah. time. Yeah. You know? It's it's so interesting because you know, like it all depends on how you how you listen to music. You know, if you're listening to it and you're not thinking about mixes, like you know, you it just doesn't bother you. But if you if you're doing it with those analytical ears, or you, then it can just be like 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 you know, if I'm like referencing something, like I doubt I would ever reference like a Prince song because I don't know that I, I would want naturally. And I'd want that my mix to be like that, but, yeah. um, but yeah, I mean, it's just uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Yeah, most definitely, most definitely. Now, yeah. speaking of, you know, people like Prince, I mean, you also you you play live. Like I said, I mean, I can't stress it enough because, you know, I've seen you online with a lot of your performances, and you are a verse player, live player. You're not just a studio guy, which I. I appreciate that because, um, you know, it's, it's uh, you always want an artist to, you know, you want them to be able to get out there and actually do it. And, and I've seen you do that. And, and what, what's, what's your process in putting the band together? Because from what I've seen, like your, your bands are very, uh, they're great players and, and mm-hmm. very much uh, well-performed. How, how do you do that? Yeah, there's just, I mean, there's a lot, there's a great, pool in, in New York of just amazing players and you know I've lived here long enough where one person leads to another leads to another and uh, you know so it's just really just the New York music scene and his eyes how I really found them uh, but yeah you know I mean I, I imagine LA is, is similar in that way like there's a lot but you know I, I feel like um As far as like, oh, as far as like playing live, that that was just a, a thing I knew I had like going for me because, I mean, some people would be like, oh, you actually play, and that was always weird to me because I was like, oh well, yeah, I'm a musician, like, I should probably play, right? You know, <laughs> That's the whole point. <laughs> but yeah, but I mean, it was later on that I realized, oh, like, okay, well, I guess I'm unique, you know. I mean, not not unique. I'm being cynical, but like. It, there's just there are a lot of I mean people that aren't really player, players in the music business and um, you know so so I figure you know if I if I can actually do it I want to make that kind of a showcasing thing you know yeah yeah I mean, I mean it, it it you know you wouldn't think it would be that big of a deal but it is I mean I, I and you've seen it you know there's a lot of great music artists that can record some stuff man and it's just like man and you get an opportunity to see them perform live and it's it's not that they're not trying it's just not quite uh, you could tell it's just not a, you know they're they're just not as versed in the live playing but yeah. um, you have those chops i mean is that would you say that drives you even more than the studio work is, is the live playing Oh yeah. Oh, live, live playing. I mean, that's why I got into it. I mean, I've learned every single skill musically because I wanted to play live, like anything studio. Like the fact that I can play guitar is just because I wanted to be on a stage. It's like, you know, and so, uh, yeah, that's, that's where it's all bad for me. I mean, I mean, it's, yeah, everything's kind of, that's what's motivated. I guess that's the engine on the stage, you know? So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's it's a very rewarding experience. And uh, I mean, with the bands that you have, the players that you have, I mean, do, you, do you guys have to rehearse a ton or is um, it an actual thing? We don't rehearse, like, a lot. <clears throat> you know, when we – if I'm doing a tour or something, like, you know, I'll probably do two rehearsals. You know, like, and then the show is going to, the first one might be like a little iffy. And, you know, I don't know, it'll get you better as the, as the, as the tour goes on. But, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, the players are, are great. So it's not like we have to be, you know, having like 
rehearsing like like bands but i also like have already produced all the parts so they have you know uh, so they kind of have their have parts to play so it's like as long as they come prepared and stuff you know I mean, I just, I'll, ne I'll never do a show without at least one rehearsal, though. I've done that a few times and had too many, like, uh -huh. I mean, you know, stop a song. Like, <laughs> that's, that's a nightmare. That is, okay, stop. Okay. We get, sorry, guys. We got to start again. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's good. Well, it seems like, I mean, would you say it's about picking, picking the right players to begin with, that that's why it's just so natural? Yeah, I mean, pick, picking picking great players who are going to take the time to learn it, you know. Um, I mean, if, if they don't, then, like, if one person doesn't, you know, which I've seen that, like, that can be, that can be difficult for a rehearsal because it's like everyone's learning stuff and they have to keep on going back. So, I mean, honestly, if everyone's prepared, it's like, if everyone's really prepared, you, you could almost do it. Um, with no rehearsal. I mean, because I've gotten to rehearsal before and and like they just know like it's like all right, let's make the song. And it's like first take and it's a new thing and it's solid, you know? So it's like it's a yeah, it's amazing. I'm I'm amazed by that because I've been a side man for very rarely in my life. And I've never been I feel like I'm always the guy who's coming prepared. <laughs> so I always have major respect for musicians that, that I've largely done that for me. Yeah, I know what you mean. So that's, you know, getting back over the past year, you know, even before COVID, I always, it's fun to follow you. It's fun to follow you on IG because it's like, I never know what you're going to do. You kind of have this kind of sporadic excitement wave of, you know, how do you keep it? so interesting because your your posts are always kind of like i don't know man it's 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 something different that makes me want to pay attention do, do you give a lot of thought to your post and social media um, i mean I, I right now i will say i did and that's only because i've just been literally like, I, I just i haven't really like been on social media much in the last like <clears throat> three to four months but but up until then I was, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't, you know, I just, I don't like putting something out that just has no point. Like, I don't like, some, I just feel like guilty. I feel like schmoozing, like being like, oh, here's me on the step. Clearly, this is just me trying to remain in your brain. Like, I'm not serving, I'm serving myself, like, it's self-serving, kind of like, <laughs> like, like, it's like, what, like, I want to like have something to bring to the table and something creative or something. And I mean, I'm not advising this, like, I, you know, I don't think that's the, really the way, I mean, I think it's probably better if you just like stay, like keep it easy. So it's like, you can actually, you know, put more stuff out, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think I just feel like there needs to be some sort of creative thing. Cause I'll just like judge myself too hard. If I don't like, you know, if I just like, so, I mean, it, it, I'm glad that you and en you enjoyed it or when people enjoy it because, uh, I mean, I, yeah, cause I always feel like I don't do enough on there. So. No, oh, man, it, it's, it's always tasteful. And one of the ones I found was, uh, it's my worst songs. According to me, you made your own playlist of the worst songs of you. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's so funny, yeah. man. Thanks, man. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I just, I would actually like to hear that from other artists, you know, like, I'd be, I'm just curious to know what songs, because I mean, I've had people be like, like my niece, she was like, yeah, Uncle Caleb, his, his favorite song is it's Careless. And the thing is, is when I wrote, when I wrote that song, I mean, for a long time, I really did love that song. And, but, and I like playing it, but um, I like playing it on guitars, and, but like, as far as like singing it nowadays, man, I just, I really don't like it. And, but it's funny because that one, like a lot of people, I mean, I've, were kind of angry. Like they were like, yo, that's my favorite song of yours. Like a, a lot of people, like that one, that one in particular, people were annoyed at, 
annoyed that I didn't like it. So, I mean, in that way, maybe it's not a good idea for an artist to do it because it's like, I am imagining, like, if I saw that, like, an, another artist that maybe I, that I dug, like, say that they really hate that song. And if I got to see them play live and they were playing that song, it would mess with my head. I'd be like, oh, they, they're just, they aren't enjoying this moment. You know? yeah, they hate the song, man. It's on the hate. Yeah. 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 Uh, that's so too, that's too funny. Yeah. So, yeah. so getting back to live, just one last thing is, you know, I think my all time favorite song from you is machine gun. And, uh, and I, I just love that song. And, uh, uh, how does, how, how did that go off live? I imagine that one, like just really mm -hmm. hits live. That one was so fun. <laughs> that one was fun because first of all, we did an arrangement that the whole first verse is a very fast lyrics. As I want to always work, you know, so it's like, it all comes in with, ooh, ooh, and it's like, it's in the, in the, Studio version, it's like a trumpet, but we sing it in high, and it's got this big intro, and then it's like, and it, and it's me a cappella with the with the uh, verses, and then it's like, you know, light light on uh, on me, and and then so it just it's a really we would start the show with that, and uh, it would hit hard, and it was also fun because it the trumpet part. Um, would be like, you know, get the crowd singing that. And yeah, that was, I'm glad you did that song. That's a really bad yeah. song, man. I could see you opening up a show with that. And I know what you mean. Like, you, yeah. could, you could do it and then you could do the second verse and then the beat drops. You do a cappella for a minute, then the band comes back. I mean, it's just a, it's a great song. Yeah. That's, it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. I am, um, it's funny. I don't think my keyboard player has, even heard the original so he only knows it like the live version and uh because you know it was like he had heard the song a bunch before it was ever even on spotify so he's like i'm like no let's do it there yeah man that's just that's that's my song so tell me what what have you been listening to lately what's what's been in your your spotify or, or whatever platform you listen to um man you know i've honestly been sure i've been i literally just like I've been texting or like tweeted uh, yesterday. Like I'm looking for new like 2021 uh, music, like current because I'm just like I'm sort of in a in a rut where it's like I'm not listening to much or what I am listening to. It's like just stuff I've already listened to a bunch, you know, and and uh, yeah. So I'm I'm like kind of just like net with that in mind, I'm honestly like, I'll listen to just like eat playlists or whatever. And then I, and then I'll always mark, I'll always like save it, you know, mm -hmm. to, to my own playlist if I like it. And then I always intend to go back and like check out the artist, but I, I've rarely, rarely done that. But so, I mean, I'm kind of, it's just, I don't have anything specific. I will. Okay. I will say one that I, that I love is this girl, your Smith. Have you heard of her? She's LA based. I don't think so. Your Smith, yeah. She's she she went by Caroline Smith first, and then she, she like rebranded. She goes by Your Smith, and I just think, I think I think she's so good. She's she's like yeah, one of my, one of my faves. Her and uh, Emily King. I do know Emily King. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Emily King, man, she's just out of out of this world. I just love her stuff so much. Her and and the production and yeah. So, but that's the thing. Like, I'd go and listen to Your Smith and Emily King. Like, I would just go. I would, so it's either like I it's either like I listen to them or I listen to a um, playlist so I can try to like hear, just hear new stuff and you know every now and then I'll try to listen to like the Billboard Hot 100. Cause I used to do that a couple of years ago when I was in like a little bit more of a pop mentality. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I don't always, I don't always love that. <laughs> I'd rather have other stuff like sent like more indie artists. Yeah. No, I'm with you. I, every now and again, I'll pop into the, like you said, the top 
trending. Usually it's like, eh, there's a couple gems in there and then I, I get off that ride. But I, for me, the radar, that's how I found you. The radar, uh, release radar is just so yeah. good, man. Because it's, it's already so much of just what I already like, but the newest material. And then they, they kind of run off of that. Yeah. Discover great. Yeah, man. I, 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 another, another one, I guess, that uh, you said radar and it reminded me of this because I feel like we, uh, is, uh, is Joey Dosick, who's, I mean, I just, his albums too. Do you know Joey Dosick? No. Oh, he's LA. And, uh, and his albums and songs are so good. I, I, so I've been listening to him a lot lately too. That's awesome. That's awesome. So Caleb, tell me what's what's going on next, man. What's what's uh, next for twenty twenty one and beyond? Yeah, <laughs> honestly, yeah, I think I'm in a place finally, like where I mean, finally, it's been four months, but like the last four months has been like just straight dad dad mode for the most part. But like I think we're starting to get onto like a little bit of a schedule where I mean, I'm just planning on writing, be a little bit more focused on like just the music rather than like before I, I would do like a lot of, I was doing a lot of video and I still, I know that that's like, you know, a way that people get very engaged. So I want to do video, but I want to also like, you know, heavily focus more on, on just music and recording and putting the songs out. And um, yeah, I mean, I don't think I'm going to be, I have a couple like shows in August but I don't think, I don't think I'm actually going to be like playing like tours or whatever still till 2022, unless I'm like opening for somebody, but I don't know. I mean, yeah, we'll see. I mean, it just seems like such a hassle to like have it all set up and then like the capacity situation and like, yeah. I don't know. It just, um, I, I, I think. I'm just going to wait a little bit, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I hear you. Well, we, we can't wait to see you back out there, Caleb, man. Man, I'm excited the next time I get to play in L.A. Last time I played in L.A., I had freaking blast. I, like, I was really happy with the turnout and what was happening there. So, um, yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, once again, Caleb Hawley. Man, I appreciate you coming through. And, Dude, uh, thanks, Jeff. Hey, it's great talking to you. It's great, great to see you as well again. And I'm glad that we have almost like the same setup, like, besides the speakers. <laughs> we have the just the part of the of the picture. Just the part of the the beautiful art in the background. Yeah, man. Awesome, Jeff. Well, awesome. thanks for having me back on. And, and uh, yeah, you got it, Caleb. Until next time, keep up the hustle, man. Keep in touch. All right, man. Later.